Hello everyone in Derby land. My name is Professor Rex and I'm coming at you for the second semi-final game between the Montreal Roller Derby Smash Squad and the Toronto Roller Derby Vipers. This game will determine who goes up against the Our Ladies of Pain from Royal City Roller Girls in Guelph, Ontario. And as we're getting set up, our referee and crew is the is led by Smasher. We got Shields, Guelo, Mr. Beard, Maya Killjoy, Disco Drew, Rez, and Nicole from crew number three. That's right, we can't say enough about referees and announcers and NSOs from this tournament. Anyone involved in Roller Derby that puts their time in deserves a big round of applause. If you're at home, please give them a round of applause because everyone deserves it. I am I am doing it on the microphone, maybe you can hear it. I am joined by Lex Tan, aka Lexington Legend. Lexington Legend. That's a great derby name. And here we go. Nam de Gurf, number 169 for the Toronto Vipers, breaks out and establishes herself as the lead. That's right, but Donata actually gets out second. Actually, is the deemed lead jammer because unfortunately, number 169, Nam de Gurf gets a penalty on their way through the pack. So Donata still had the opportunity to get lead jammer and does take it away from the Montreal and uh, the Toward Vipers. Forced out of bounds was uh, Donata, and now she's got to reset and go through the pack once more. And she does, she gets through. And she scores five. It's a grand slam here for the first points of this game. That's right, Guaylo for show, showing the four points plus a little thumb action. That means five. Coming around for her second scoring pass. Uh, already picking up a few points. Let's see if she can get through all of them and does. I believe that should be four. That is five points. It is five. If you're not understanding how that works, the jammer from the Vipers did exit the penalty box but was not inside the engagement zone. So the Montreal Smash Squad jammer passed the blocker, which got her the point for the jammer in the penalty box before that pass started. So that's how that works if you're scoring at home. That's why sometimes it looks like they're scoring five and sometimes they're scoring four. Nanata called off that uh, the jam, and it's a 10-0 lead after that first one. That's right, the Smash Squad coming over here to the Ted Reeves Arena from the bubble game earlier. Uh, they were originally in the Ted Reeves, but had to be moved over due to injury. Uh, they had a makeup game in a different arena, but have come back to Ted Reeves and were quite successful in their game at the bubble, beating beating the team that they played. I can't remember who they are right now, unfortunately, but hourly shit for Montreal Smash Squad trying to get lead jammer as well as number two four for the Vipers, which is Slashimi. Slashimi. Two points scored on that last uh, on that last play there by Ali Shit. Right, I, I believe it was a lead jammer given to Auli Shit. This is her now her scoring pass. Unfortunately, unable to score any points before calling it off. So that was actually a zero to zero jam. Auli Shit over Slam Shimi. Setting up for the next jam. It's going to be number 808, Skate of Emergency for the Toronto, for, for the Tord Vipers. And still, we're still waiting to see, get a view on who is uh, the, the jammer for the Montreal Smash Squad. And she That's breaks out, great quick, quick move there. And it is number 808 as well too, Flatula Clark. This is 808 versus 808. This is an incredible jam. I'm not sure what is it with the double numbers in this tournament, but there's a quite a few with a number sandwiched between a zero. There's a number of players with 101 or 808 or 404. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's a new trend in roller derby, but it definitely seems to be a trend in this fresh tournament. We also got, uh, speaking of which, Pink Killer 60. Yeah, Pink Killer, 606 for the Montreal squad. Right. I know uh, I coach and ref in Royal City, and I know we have a number of uh, loner jerseys 
and all the loan jerseys are of those numbers, 101, 202, and so on. So that's quite possibly what these leagues have adopted as well. Nam, Nam de Gur established as the lead jammer, making her way to the pack. A star pass for the Smash Squad. Jammers passing the star to their pivots. I can't quite pick up the number of the pivot curling the track, and she's finally put the star on her head. Now she's able to score. That is 593 for the Smash Squad. That is uh, Amur La Makina. I hope I'm not butcherizing that name. If you can help me out. <laughs> Amaru La Makina. There we go. I, there's one thing I'm not good at, and that's reading and comprehending derby names. So you need to, you need to, you need to give me some, uh, some, some love at home and not, not hate me. I believe that uh, I, I believe our viewer is a very, uh, uh, the, the viewer is a very forgiving viewer. Sometimes. Oh. You'd be surprised. Some are quite get quite quite upset if you mispronounce her name, but I think that announcers need a little bit of forgiveness mm -hmm. because there's a lot of words that need to be said in a short amount of time, and unfortunately, a lot of these names are quite difficult to wrap your mind, tongue, and mouth around. So, give the announcer a little bit of love. They're trying their best. <laughs> time out on the floor taken now by the Montreal Smash Squad. 47 seconds into the timeout. The clock stopped at 15.24 with the score. Smash Squad 14 toward Viper is 4. That's right. This is a very low-scoring game. Uh, it's already it's only 5 minutes in this game. And there's only 14 points for the Smash Squad and 4 for the Vipers. Most of the games of the tournament, by this point, there's quite a significant amount of points for both teams on the board. So this is a testament for, to the both abilities of... Toronto Roller Derby and the Montreal Roller Derby leagues training their fresh meat and understanding how the game works and how to control the score and control the pack. And here we go again. And the Vipers break out in front of the lead jammer. That's Lashimi, followed now by number 610, Ali Shit from Montreal. Montreal Making always has the greatest names. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ali Shit. Nice. I think the Vipers called that off, only passing one blocker on the track. But thankfully for the, the Vipers, there was someone in the penalty box. Actually, sorry, excuse me, passing two. Thankfully, there was someone in the penalty box, so they get three points. And if you are unsure about that rule at home, if there is someone in the penalty box, you still score the points of that person. That person still counts as points. And here we go again. The jammer now is Montreal 593, Amaru Lamakina. And state of emergency, uh, bringing, up, uh, bringing up the rear there. For sure, a decent, a nice offensive block attempt from one of the Smash Squad skaters trying to spring your jammer to get quick and easy points. That was number 77 from the Smash Squad. That's Flacula Clark, I hope. Uh, is that right? Flac uh, could be Flatula, could be Flatula. Flatula Clark. The the Let's uh, uh this out. Flatula Clark. Yeah, it's the uh, it, it's uh, based off the name of the woman who sang, uh, "When life is getting you lonely, you can always go downtown." That's right. Her. Yeah. Everyone at home needs to give him props for knowing that song. That's amazing. <laughs> Everyone, give him a round of applause. That's amazing. There is one. There was an. Up, there was an episode of The Simpsons where Groundskeeper Willie sings that song in his Scottish accent, and it's nice. hilarious. <laughs> Sc Groundskeeper Willie. Some of the side characters in all shows are always the best, but Groundskeeper Willie definitely high up there on any of my list for sure. <laughs> Lead jammer now for the Toronto Vipers. We got number 169, Nam Gur, scoring some points there, and she calls it off. It is toward chipping away at this lead. Early on in this game, it was 16 to four, I believe, and now it's 16 to 11 over after the next couple of jams. Nickeling, diming this game, trying to bring it back in their favor. And I think because the score is so low, Tord can play this route and pull out this game. They're keeping it close. And anytime you keep it close, it's anyone's game at that point. Mm -hmm. One mistake and a jammer can be in the penalty box and someone scores 20 points. Mm -hmm. 
I was also meant. I was also mentioning to uh, to Jam Solar earlier. Like uh, the other times, I've also called different competitions uh, as it goes along. For instance, in video game competitions, particularly Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat, you see a lot more defensive play, and you don't see a lot more uh, a lot of uh, aggressive offense in the later rounds for fear of just you know making the wrong move and uh, putting yourself at a real disadvantage. So maybe the, I don't I don't know. Is this is that something that happens? Do you find happens here with Roller Derby here at? Uh, uh, Absolutely. As I, I've, co I've coached for a number of years, and what happens during game is when players come off the track, if we're as coaches aren't not seeing what we're liking on the track, we're trying to adjust. That's a lead jam for Donata, number 1969 for Montreal Smash Squad. But we're trying to make sure that our team is adjusting to how the game is going and trying to adjust things. And that you're absolutely right. Any change, nice attempted wow. apex jump, calls off the jam, wow. and does get those four points. Nice job by Donata from the Montreal Smash Quad. Really nice them. Just so you know, you do not have to land a jump in Roller Derby to score the points as long as one of your feet lands first before any of your other body parts, you do score those points. So one of her foot did, did land and she does actually technically pass everyone. She did score those points and that's, that's quite incredible. Four points on that last play. Uh, and just a, yeah, as you said, an incredible play. Taking the inside track on that one. It was. But yeah, adjustments in play are key, and any team needs to do that. That's why this tournament is so interesting, because you have to make those adjustments on the fly, because there is only 20 minutes. Oh, Huge great. Huge hit for number zero, FBI. The pivot from the toward Vipers, and number zero, eight zero, Skate of Emergency get taken out as well. She Let's calls it see, off. She does call it off. She does get her four points, but that was a hard-fought four points. Mm -hmm. Speaking of hard-fought, Toronto and Montreal faced off in the uh, uh, in the second match here at Ted Reeve Arena earlier. Toronto was up huge uh, uh, for most of the game, for the first half of the game, actually. But Montreal just kept chipping away, chipping away. And in the final jam, uh, Montreal was able to run away with the, with the victory. Yeah, and uh, like back to what we were talking about earlier, little adjustments in gameplay can uh, really help your team out. And I imagine both these leagues are coached by um, quite phenomenal skaters of their leagues, and both of them have a lot of experience, so they do know the game well and know how to adjust. Mr. Beard calling a high block penalty on number 0303 from Montreal Smash Squad. That's Ia Leona. That's right. That did spring towards Jammer Vipers number 169. Uh, Norm Degur does get her four points, call it off, and 20 to 19. This game is incredible. If you're following at home, there is, by the start of this jam, there will be just over 10 minutes to go, and the game is essentially tied. I think we may have lost a microphone here. We might have to switch them out and see if they're going to test out. But unfortunately for all of you at home, I might be by myself for a second until we figure out this technical malfunction. OK, I think we figured it out. Uh, thankfully, the, the referees called an official review or official timeout for that matter, just making sure that all the penalties were correct. Again, if you're following at home, it takes seven referees to referee a game properly. It also takes a number of officials. Um, by my count, I see eight in front of me making sure this game happens. There's three in the penalty box, three in the scoreboard, three in the middle, and they're all trying to make this game happen. Out of many sports out there, uh so hockey, hockey has a maximum of four. There's uh, about seven umpires as well, too, for baseball during the uh, during their uh, MLB playoffs. But uh, yeah, seven, eight uh, the referees are definitely mandatory here in roller derby. There's just so much happening and going on. That's true. They like to call themselves officials because that groups them all up together. Referees and NSOs all are considered officials of the game. Uh, toward Vipers, lead jam in position to take the lead in this game. Let's see if their team can make it happen. And Sashimi gets past this. Sashimi does, Vipers. scores four points, but I think Smash Squad scored two on the back end. They did, but it's still lead jam. If, you're, if you know Roller Derby at home, 
you should know if there's a lead change, that means you have to drink whatever's in your hand, whether it be a coffee, water, or some kind of adult beverage. So please, that was a lead change. 23 to 22, Vipers over Smash Squad. Take a drink. Again, the Smash Squad's Donata taking the lead, but followed closely by Skate of Emergency. There's a little bit of jammer on jammer action happening in turn three. Skate of Emergency knocks out Donata, forcing Donata to call it off. Zero, zero jam for the Montreal Smash Squad. That was an incredible jam. I wish all of you had the eyes that we have here in the arena. That was a really good jam. Skate of Emergency catching up to Donata on turn three, knocking her out of bounds, forcing her to call it off despite losing lead. So the score. So sorry about the crackling at home. We're having a little bit of technical difficulty with their microphones. We are going to try and figure that out, but I will try and give you all the action. Montreal Smash Squad with Lee Jammer again, followed closely behind by Divas or the Vipers Jammer number 169, Norm DeGur, calling it off. Let's see what the score is. Two points for the Smash Squad, zero for the Vipers. This game is going back and forth. There's another lead change, 24 to 23. Incredible. Eight minutes to go. I hope this game can stay the way it is. Timeout for the Montreal Smash Squad. They want to reset and make sure that all their players are, they know what's going on. They're all calm. Sometimes in the sport of roller derby, uh, tensions get high and people may do uh, incredible things that they're not normally able or willing to do, which may affect the game. So sometimes bench staff just need to bring everyone in, rein them in, calm them down in a second, and refocus them. And it looks like Montreal Smash Squad is ex doing that exactly. They have a very interesting, calming timeout group cheer happening right now. I'm sure it works for their team. And we'll definitely find out if it does in this next jam. This is jam 14 coming up between the Toward Toronto Roller Derby Vipers and the Montreal Roller Derby Smash Squad. The score is 24 to 23 for the Smash Squad currently. There is seven minutes and 55 seconds left on this clock. That was the whistle to start this jam. Both jammers coming out, number 24 from the Smash Squad. Attempting to get through this pack. And does number 24, that's Sashimi. Sashimi has lead and has attempted star pass from number 41 of the Montreal Smash Squad. S turns into a star stash and Sashimi calls it off while taking a knee, scoring four points taking a slight lead over this Montreal Smash Squad, 27-24. That is another lead change. If you've been drinking all day like myself, then you're probably drunk because that's another lead change and everyone has to drink. So if you have a drink in your hands, please put it to your mouth and put it in your face. Number 080, Skate of Emergency trying to get it done for the Vipers, but unfortunately, Smash Squad, or fortunately, if you're a Montreal fan, number 808, jammers of the same number. Flacky Lacarte gets lead jammer and is in scoring position. Let's see if the Smash Squad can do some, and they do really nice offensive inside blocking from the Smash Squad. It looks like they are potentially gonna run this jam, and they are, because it is a power jam for the Smash Squad. Smash Squad have taken the lead, 29-27. Flacula Clark on her second scoring pass of this jam. A little bit of a pile up on that turn three. Hopefully she can maintain a composure and not go into the penalty box. I hear a whistle, someone's getting called. It was not the jammer from Montreal. She has scored another five points. That's 10 points so far, 34-27. This is huge for Montreal Roller Derby Smash Squad.
So I apologize again, home, if you're hearing a little bit of crackling, try and adjust your volume. We're just trying to figure out the second microphone in the Ted Reeve Arena. It is, it is important to try and have two announcers, but we'll do our best. If you're hearing a bit of, of crackling, that's just us trying to fix the situation over here in the, in the Ted Reeve Arena. Norm DeGur, lead jammer for Tord Vipers. This game has gone back and forth for each team. Norm DeGur already in scoring pass, trying to take that inside line, does. I don't know, I think she took a penalty possibly. It looks like she has taken a cutting penalty. Guaylo Fasho is calling a cutting the track penalty on Norm DeGur of the Vipers. Fortunately for the Vipers, they are on scoring pass. They have already scored points. They have pocket points, if you will. Montreal Smash Squad, number 610, trying, holy shit, trying to get out of the pack. The defense of the Vipers looks really, really strong currently, but she's able to finally find her way on the inside line on turn three. That is her first pass as Mr. Beard is skating around, signifying that is her first pass by waving his hands in front. Norm Degur does come out of the penalty box. She did not score those points. She may have already scored those points going to the penalty box, but came out and scored the same points. If you're scoring at home correctly, those were the same points that she went to the penalty box with. Comes to the pack, scores another four points. Both teams trading points right now. It's 40 to 31. I believe 40 to 35 is, is more correct. Montreal Smash Squad coming through again, another four points. 44 to 35 currently. Potentially Tord has scored another four points. And they have. The Jammer Ref has put it up. 44 to 39 is still anyone's game. Toronto has a very good defensive standard to the rear. Hopefully they're able to hold her up and they have been able to. Norm Decker trying to come through and score as many points as they can, as she can. Let's see how this score ends up. I'm not going to say anything until the referees and the scoreboard officials have figured everything out. And there is a timeout. Timeout for the Vipers. It looks like the Vipers have scored 15 points, the Smash Squad 8, which makes it an even closer score than it was before. That's a differential of 2, 44 to 42, with 3 minutes and 11 seconds left on that clock. Smash Squad have one official review left. It looks like Toronto Vipers have all three, no, have two left. They have their own timeout and one official review. So if the Vipers need to stop this clock in order to put some points on the board, they have the ability to. The Smash Squad, unfortunately, can only stop the clock once. We'll have to wait to see if that plays in any of these teams' favors. Smash Squad blockers and jammer are talking with one of their bench staff on the track, just making sure that everyone is on the same page. This game doesn't work if you don't understand how the pack works and if you don't understand how to play together, because the only way to make the pack work is to play together. So like no other sport, you need to play as a team. That whistle signifies the start of that. And really quick lead jam for the Vipers. Number 24, Slashimi. It is definitely potential that the Vipers do take the lead in this jam, which will be huge for Toronto Roller Derby. Slashimi cuts to the pack. Let's see if they score points where they do. That is five points. It is 47 to 44 currently. Slashimi. Very nonchalantly calls it off. If you weren't, if you didn't see what happened at home, Slashimi got lead, entered the pack, started scoring points on opposing blockers, and scored and passed the opposing jammer. The Montreal Smash Squad's jammer repassed her, but unfortunately, the tour jammer already got the jammer panel, the jammer points. So that's why it was five points instead of four. Wow, and the Montreal Smash Squad get leads. Donata, very consistent jammer. 
for the Montreal Smash Squad all game long. Making sure her team is in it and able to keep track with those teams. In scoring position, tries to take it and does take the inside lead. Can she pass the jammer? If she does, that is a five point natural grand slam. 49 to 47 for the Montreal Smash Squad. One minute and 47, 40 seconds left. Skate of, skate of emergency getting out of the pack. Just now, Montreal Smash Squad jammer scoring some last minute points. Looks like a four point jam as well, making that jam nine points to zero. Smash Squad 53, Toronto Vipers 47, 1 minute and 23 seconds left. This is going to be jam 19 coming up. These have been some pretty quick jams. Most jams of this tournament have lasted over a minute just to, due to some jammer penalties or no one getting lead, but getting to 19 jams in a 20 minute period is quite impressive. 53 to 47 now for the Smash Squad. Very, very close game, minute 23 left. I'm super glad that I have a second announcer because I was getting sick of my own voice. <laughs> so you should be thankful at home especially because I, I definitely needed some help out here. Uh, from what I heard, you were doing just fine and you're doing really well, man. No, it, it's, it, the, I love roller derby, I can talk about it all day. I, I, wish, I wish I can have the time with everyone to explain how great this game is so that they can understand. Unfortunately, because it's a volunteer run sport, sometimes it looks a little frantic and weird, but if you just tear it down to the brass tacks, it's an incredible high contact, high competitive sport that is incredibly original. So if you haven't watched, or if you know someone who hasn't watched, please tell them to come out. They won't be disappointed. And they sell beer at a very, very good price. Exactly. <laughs> For all your roller derby needs, go to layer9.ca. Smash squad number 610 with a lead. Holy shit, that was an important lead jam for them. They have control of this jam with less than one minute and 10 seconds left. And they have the lead on the scoreboard. So Owly shit can take her time going through the sack, making sure that she doesn't get a penalty. She decides to engage anyways, calls it off. Two points for the Smash Squad. Let's see if Tord takes their timeout. This may be a good time to take it. It was a good time to, it was a good time to, to, to end that jam because, uh, as we know as well too from uh, the, the games that have been here, Nam the Gur was one of the biggest scorers along with uh, Skate of Emergency uh, for, uh, for, the, uh, for the Vipers. It is, I think, I think Tord did take the timeout now. Unfortunately, they ran a bit of the, too much of the clock off the, off, the, off the game clock, but that's okay. This tournament is for everyone to learn. If, if you are coaching a team at home, if your team is losing and you have a timeout on the board and there's less than two minutes left, the, the very second you can stop that clock is is best so if you have the opportunity to stop that clock and there's not much time on stop it as soon as possible that is the that is the the the, the very minimal you can do for your team toward to take a timeout is good to do that because they can reset everyone and make sure they're focused but they may have been able to take a timeout when there was 47 seconds left on the clock as opposed to 30. and again this game is all about points time and distance so if you're giving up one of them you're not doing very well that's 33 percent of what you're giving up right mm -hmm. And, as the, and the winner of this game will go on to face, will go, will go on to the championship match. They will face it's, the Arladies of pain. pain from Royal City Roller Girls, who have been a very strong team. I'm not biased at all. I have nothing to do with that league. Actually, I do. I coach their travel teams and I referee for, for out, out of that league. But they're, they're a great league. If you haven't watched them play, they're amazing, amazing skaters. Everyone has a good time. Both number 808s are the uh, are the jammers over here, and Montreal's 808. That is Flachula Clark. Nice job, Skate of Emergency, almost getting out as well. I think almost very close to taking a track cut penalty. Number 593 almost recycled their back and created a penalty and calls it off. Montreal Smash Squad calls off that jam. That is the unofficial final. I know my inclination went up but it's just the unofficial final. We're gonna wait for the official final. 
As it stands right now, the uh, the unofficial uh, unofficial score, 55 to 47 for the Smash Squad. And if that is the, and if that is your final score, uh, Montreal will be go going up against Guelph, our ladies of pain, and the Vipers, and the Vipers would be going up against the Queen City Rollers in the next game. That's right. If 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 you're unsure at home, the reason why there's an unofficial and official score, the uh, NSOs have to just kind of count through the points that have been scored in the game to make sure that their final tally is done. This is called math, something that I'm terrible at. So they go through it and just make sure everything's correct. The referees go over and check, and then they make it an uh, official final because at the end of the day, the scoreboard isn't what determines the winner of the game. It's what's on the pieces of paper that is considered the stats. So they have to make sure that's correct before they, they continue on. As you, say, as you were saying, you're, up, uh, you're not as adept at math, neither am I. So I'm very, very thankful for the NSLs and the, and the official scorers table. <laughs> no, I know it's, it's a difficult position. I've done some of the NSO positions, and it's a lot of, it's a lot of work. I give them all a lot of credit because it's a lot to pay attention to. You may not think that it's important, but the WFTDA, even though this is not a WFTDA sanctioned tournament, the WFTDA does not work without the NSOs. And so, victory laps being taken now by both teams. Montreal on the floor right now, taking their lap. Yeah, the victory lap is the greatest. They all high-five each other, congratulate each other, make sure everyone's all super happy. Unfortunately, one team is more happy than the other. Montreal Smash Squad does move on to the final game. That game will be coming up, it says at 8, but I think it'll be a little bit later. Uh, would it, the 7 o'clock is the next game. That is a 3-4 game. If you're keeping track at home or trying to figure out how much time you have for things, there is a little eye icon up in the top right corner of your screen. If you're on Roller Derby Layer 9, if you click on that, that will update you with what the schedule is going to be. And it is, up, it is close to updated as possible. So... If you're trying to figure out when is the next game and when is the final game, take a look at that, find out what it is. But the very next game coming up, it will be the three-four game. So it'll be the Queens. It'll be the Queen City Roller Girls, Queens Court versus the Toronto Vipers in the three-four game. That's right. And unfortunately for the Vipers, they have to play two games in a row. The final game will be the Montreal Smash Squad versus the Our Ladies of Pain. Our Ladies of Pain from Royal City. I believe that is the first time. Our Ladies of Pain have gotten to the final. Mm -hmm. Interesting. It is. Uh, and they've met up against the Smash Squad a number of times in the past. Last year was the first time the Royal City, Our Ladies of Pain, had beat the Smash Squad. Um, this year was the second time they beat Montreal Smash Squad. They beat them in the bubble, and now they have to play them for the final. So it'll in be interesting to see if the coaches come together and figure out what they need to change to make a different outcome happen in that final game. Mm -hmm. But I am Professor Rex signing off for until the final game. Thank you very much. I appreciate all your patience at home. And this is uh, FNF Fast and Furious 2017 at the Ted Reeve Arena on Layer9.ca. If you need to go out and get a drink or take a pee or get some food, we will be back in 15 minutes-ish. 15 minutes will be the next game. Thank you.